Hello everyone, uh, we are now set uh, to learn integrated photonic devices and uh, circuits. Okay. So, uh, in this lecture, first lecture, I will try to give you some uh, background of the course and then uh, some structure of the uh, lectures and learning outcome I will be discussing. Let us move on. Uh, the first thing what we will learn uh, that is actually uh, the background I, as I mentioned that we will be learning a bit about the uh, background story of the uh, subject integrated photonic devices and circuits. And uh, towards that direction we need to learn first how the invention of transistor happened and what is this today's uh, evolution of integrated circuit into wafer scale engine. Sometimes it is called WSE, wafer scale engine and that is the outcome uh, of the invention of transistor in 1947. Okay. So, you know all that uh, the transistor was first time demonstrated by three stalwarts, uh, John Bardeen, uh, Walter Barton, this guy and then Sockley, William Sockley. So, this is the, uh, the photograph of the first transistor what they had demonstrated in 1947 and the size of this transistor was 1 centimeter, about 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter and it was in germanium sample. Germanium is a semiconductor okay, with a band gap of about 0.6, about 0.6365 electron volt or so. Okay. So, after the invention of transistor, uh, it is about 12 years later or so, Jack Kilby while he was working in Texas Instruments, he first time demonstrated miniaturized electronic circuit. So, from transistor to circuit that was the first demonstration, experimental demonstration. Before that, there was also proposal etcetera uh, was there, but this was the first, this is the photograph you can see. What is first integrated circuit, three transistor was integrated in this chip. If you see this is, this is the how dirty it is and it was just placed in a pre, uh, frame. So, plate aluminum plate you can see. So, here is the block where transistors were uh, fabricated and then you have all the uh, connecting wires everything outside it was shown. So, that is what they say that first germanium integrated circuit with metal interconnects. So, inside the uh, semiconductor germanium sample there are transistors as well as metal interconnect. Transistors means you know this is an active device. It is basically uh, um, you can control, you can actually uh, tune the resistance, trans resistance. Resistance can be controlled. You can control the electron flow. By controlling the electron flow from one transistor to another transistor, you can have some kind of certain kind of functions which you will see in later days. It is actually the success. Okay. And then so, within 2-3 years later uh, Robert Noyes because germanium was uh, somehow it is a bit basically uh, not so easy material and relatively easier material, material is silicon and silicon band gap also it is a semiconductor band gap is also more than the germanium so that it can operate at higher temperatures reliably. So, the integrated circuit was demonstrated in silicon it is kind of wafer you see. This is a silicon wafer and four transistors were integrated and interconnected in silicon. That has been done by uh, Robert Nice and his team 
while working in Fairchild Semiconductor. So, now the transistor to integrated circuit demonstrated and it was uh, it was shown that you can integrate more and more number of transistors. Okay? So, it was feasible and that happened in 1961. Now, you see 1961, now we are in 2021 and here it is uh, shown how the integrated circuit evolution happened, real evolution happened, practical device application happened between 1971 to 2018, just 3 years ago, all the data available here. I think uh, uh, I am not sure the uh, the picture is somehow little bit blurred, but if you are little bit careful, you can just uh, see that this x axis is starting from 1970 and here it is 2018. So, every 2 years it is shown and y axis is actually showing the transistor count. So, 1000, 5000, 10000 and then this is 1 lakh. So, this is 1 million and then this is actually 1 billion and this is actually 50 billion transistor. So, transistor count on a chip you know this transistor integrated circuit later on it was used for microprocessor and uh, uh, CPU, GPU all the computer um, motherboard etcetera demonstrated by various companies. These are actually different model number with various companies. So, as the time passes from 1970 to 2018 we see that cer certain GPU uh, CPUs are shown here which is about 1 billion to more than 1 billion transistor could be integrated. Okay. And it has been shown that also uh, in a uh, integrated electronic chip more than 10 billion transistor also uh, particularly Tesla uh, GPU, Nvidia uh, GPU fabricated in um, TSMC, they are more than 15 billion transistor. And it is not there, that is the not the end. And very recently, actually, uh, Cerebras Systems, a California based startup dedicated to accelerating artificial intelligence computing speeds, has unveiled the largest chip ever built, so called wafer scale engine, wafer scale electronics engine. I will just explain a little later. For the moment, you just imagine the number. So, this is the number it is shown here about 1.2 trillion, 2 trillion means 10 to the power 12, 1.2 into 10 to the power 12 transistors and that has been integrated in 46,225 millimeter square. So, it is in the uh, millimeter square uh, that means full wafer. In full OFR, they have integrated 1.2 trillion transistors okay, and uh, that has been used for targeted for art artificial intelligence and machine learning. Before that, it is in the inset it is shown here. So, largest GPU in a chip that was 21.1 billion transistors in 815 millimeter square, 815 millimeter square that means about 8.1 centimeter square and so on in that circuit that is actually graphical processor unit normally people use for um, computer operations, display and gaming all those type of things. Right? So, far so good that transistor to integrator this is this is just announced in 2019 by the way okay just 2 years back so full wafer wafer full wafer i mean to say this is the area shown here but if you see that wafer means silicon wafer nowadays available and they are uh, being used in semiconductor foundry with a size of 3 300 millimeter diameter so 300 30 centimeter diameter you can imagine 30 centimeter diameter it is uh, uh, more than your uh, uh, lunch plate, what you use 
uh, for your lunch for example ok. So, that type of wafer and full wafer you can integrate with trillions of transistors to get certain application so called wafer scale engine, wafer scale electronics engine that has been demonstrated and it is all about to be excelling. So, in one hand we see that there is a tremendous success of uh, electronics industry starting from transistor to wafer scale engine. Now, parallelly, parallel to that evolution another important area has been evolved. I just I just uh, want to explain that in that in terms of just invention of laser diode not laser by the way laser was demonstrated earlier. So, invention of laser diode that means solid state laser when it was demonstrated that opens up new area also and continuous research in academic domain and lately industrial recognition because of that there was one interesting device interesting uh, um, integrated circuit also it is another type of integrated circuit instead of electronics integrated circuit it is it is actually photonics integrated circuits and they are called silicon photonics engine. So, you can remember there we are talking about wafer scale engine electronics engine and parallelly now we have silicon photonics engine. The ultimately how it is evolved that is the story I want to discuss before I enter into the course of so called integrated photonic devices and circuits. Because this electronics IC and uh, silicon photonics engine you cannot think they are actually completely different area they are actually and independent area they are actually uh, complementing each other this two area is basically merging that means photonics and electronics is merging and merging because of that merge actually the photonics industry is booming nowadays. So, I will try to give you some overview starting from laser diode how silicon fed photonics engine today has been evolved ok. So, you see laser diode it was actually in 1962 it, uh, reported in the literature ok physical review letters here physical review letters and it was basically none other than this guy Robert Hall he presented his team presented the first semiconductor laser made out of gallium arsenide gallium arsenide also a compound semiconductor it is not like silicon and germanium it is a elementary semiconductor it is a compound semiconductor alloy gallium and arsenide together make make some kind of compound and that is also semiconductor so called direct band gap semiconductor it is something different property than indirect band gap semiconductor like silicon and germanium and because of the direct uh, band gap semiconductor ok it is actually uh, used it could be possible to demonstrate laser that means laser means nothing but it is a laser diode means actually it is a pn junction p type doping n type doping when you give a forward bias then what happen electron and hole will be combined in the depletion region and that energy electron will lose energy and then you can have light electromagnetic wave. So, that is what it is said that laser diode is not nothing but it is a device which converts electrical energy into optical energy. So, I say E to O and this is the first photograph of the uh, semiconductor laser diode made out of gallium arsenide. You see this is the diode and uh, some photograph it is shown and the contact wires all those are shown. I have just taken directly from this paper copying from this paper and in this device if you see if you are just slowly slowly increasing the forward bias or current. So, initially below threshold current in the diode you see a, a light electromagnetic wave will be emitting 
with a spectrum looking like that x axis if you see this is lambda starting from 8200 angstrom that means 820 nanometer to uh, 870 nanometer. So, you see around peak is around 8 840 nanometer more than 840 nanometer it is coming this is the broad spectrum you are getting. But as you keep on increasing the current forward current in the diode and you cross a certain threshold then emission intensity power electromagnetic wave it is actually enlarged many times it was just almost double it is shown just above threshold current and at the same time you see narrowing down the spectrum. So, earlier it was broad below threshold and now above threshold you see narrow if you increase further current it will be narrowing down further and your power intensity it will intensify around a certain wavelength around 840 nanometer 850 nanometer you can get. So, that was actually a landmark success that it the laser diode normally the diode semiconductor diode transistor it it actually helped uh, electrics in the uh, electronics industry and now say another type of device it is coming out that is electric electrical to optical energy conversion possible and this optical energy whatever it is generating it is completely uh, very nice narrow mono, almost monochromatic and that opens up another area that area is called integrated optics. So, that was demonstrated in around 1960s and in 1969 uh, Stuart Miller, he reported, uh, he wrote an, a proposal uh, article, the article in which he proposed the subject called integrated optics and it was published in Bell System Technical Journal. That time he was working for the, Stuart Miller was working for the Bell Labs. Okay. So, as here just comment here, the, the is the first proposal of integrated optics how that proposal come. So, in 1960s fiber optic technology developed throughout 1960. Miller demonstrated its usefulness and presented the idea of combining various optical components on one semiconductor chip that is his uh, contribution Miller's Stuart Miller. But in this paper what he mentioned very interesting you see as he, as he writes, this paper outlines a proposal for a miniature form of laser beam circuitry, laser beam circuitry, please note the phrase laser beam circuitry, that circuit term basically I mentioned here laser circuitry that term actually borrowed from integrated electronic circuitry. In ele integrated electronic circuitry, you have electron beam circuitry current circuit and you have to have a circuit where you can control the electron flow, but here you can have he is proposing you can have a laser beam circuitry and that is possible by changing refractive index index of refraction he says in the order of 10 to the power minus 2 10 to the power minus 3 within a cross section of 10 microns cross section if you just change a refractive index about 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power just very little amount 0 0.001 to 0 0.001 refractive index change if you can uh, do compared to its surrounding region then you can you can actually confine light or laser beam within that cross section and as long as you maintain that cross section light will be guided. So, you can take light to your desired destination depending on the circuitry, but how that circuitry that that uh, guide laser beam circuit how that can be fabricated he says that is po possible. How that is possible he says this paper also indicates possible miniature forms for a laser modulator hybrids and that can be done by means of photolithographic technique. Photolithographic technique was invented for the uh, demonstration of integrated electronic circuit 
So, same technique you can use to demonstrate laser beam circuitry. Okay. And not only just guide laser beam guide or uh, what you call that uh, so called uh, refractive index change cross section you can also think of of a platform where actually you can integrate laser itself. Modulator is a very interesting uh, uh, component device we will be learning in this course of course, where actually you can convert electrical signal into electrical data information into optical information okay, that is modulator and hybrid type of circuit you can design. And the most important comment was in the abstract he says, if that is happen this type of circuitry is realized, then economy should ultimately result. So, ultimately you know economy, it is it should be cost effective, it should be economical. So, if integrated optics is possible, then you can have that type of thing. Okay. Now, same Stuart Miller. Once it is proposed from Bell system, Bell Labs, many people started working, and within three years, uh, Stuart Miller wrote another re review paper where the title was Survey of Integrated Optics, and that was published in Journal of Quantum Electronics. It's a bit of elaborated paper. He demonstrated, he actually discussed what so far uh, uh, happened towards integrated optics. The first thing happened in this figure it is shown that the guiding practically earlier it was proposed now practically is actually refractive index change in the surface layer of a substrate this is a glass substrate it is changed and whenever your light from the object is a source it is shown and you can focus that light through a prism this is a prism prism coupler then light can actually tunnel into the substrate and part of the light actually propagates are the guided mode in the surface layer and something is actually it is being uh, refracted to the substrate. So, when it is guided here it will have a particular shape very nice beam without diffraction it can come and you can take it out and if you want if you wish you can if it is in the free space if it is a little bit diffracted or so on. So, you can have a slit and you can clean up then you can again launch into another waveguide planar waveguide. And again, if you wish, you use another prism, you can take it out. So, that is how the first thing anything first happens. You remember that transistor was how dirty looking, integrated circuit, how dirty it was looking. But now, also, you see waveguide also it is demonstrated, it is something looking very bulky, and let's say at that time, first time whatever demonstrated it can be uh, looking bad, but uh, inherent information gave sufficient uh, stimulus to the uh, academic community. And uh, they uh, went on to demonstrate that in this guide there are a different type of field, their pattern of field intensity electromagnetic wave can be there like T 0, T 1 they are actually kind of mode guided mode that actually characteristics. Uh, profile uh, if this is the confined region this is the planar region it is here that has been shown then different type of modes how it will be looking and they will be guided uh, orthogonally without interfering each other they can carry energy in the waveguide. Okay. And here actually it is shown how they have been fabricated this planar waveguide structure by just ion implantation ion bombardment energetic ion the bombarded from this side and depending on the energy it can penetrate up to a certain length and in that certain area there it will be uh, just somehow uh, um, uh, stabilized there, there will be incorporated and doped and in the doped region refractive index will be changed and that refractive index change will be around in the order of 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3 according to the proposal and you see the profile field strength that is light whenever you are launching inside the field distribution intensity profile how it will be looking like it is shown here. So, that is amazing that 
uh, it was proposed that if waveguide can be fabricated, integrated optic circuit can be demonstrated. Now, this is also waveguide is demonstrated. Okay. And then uh, in the same paper also it is shown you can have two waveguide here for example, two waveguide, two planar waveguide in the upper, two different energy if you are just bombarding then you can have ref higher refractive index change in two different layers. That means, in vertically you can have two different flame, uh, planar waveguide where refractive index is more and you can actually confine light in the upper layer as well as a lower layer also. And if you can design properly, it has been shown that if two waveguides are there, for example, this is a certain kind of uh, waveguide structure, this black in the surface layer, in a planar waveguide structure and other things. So, interesting part is that if you see this waveguide and this waveguide at the beginning, they were far apart. And then when they are coming closer and closer, then what happens? The guided mode, if you see in the previous slide, the guided mode, if you see some field, it extends outside outside the core region where refractive index is higher, we will be calling that as a core. And outside this is evanescent tail, this is evanescent tail that is called evanescent field. So, in this case if these two waveguide, if you are guided mode, if you are bringing them together. So, what happens? The evanescent field of the one waveguide is inter can interact with the neighboring waveguide and in this way light can tunnel. So, that you can have one input if you launch here light can tunnel to the second wave guide and you can get here and here also bit. If you wish if you design properly then what happens if you launch here complete energy can be transferred to here. And if you can just make certain kind of uh, active actuations then it is possible that light can be switched back and forth from the it is called so called uh, bar port. If you are launching here this can be called bar port and this is actually cross port. Okay. So, in this way actually you can make switch power splitters so on. And also if you see you need a certain area where actually the waveguide after a certain interaction length in the beginning at uh, and, and at the end you need to take it apart. So, that you can stop interacting the waveguide should be decoupled. So, for that purpose you need to bend the waveguide structure. So, that is also demonstrative see bends you can just launch here and you can bend light because this is a kind of refractive index change the cross section about 10 micron you are considering higher refractive index where light will be confined uh, because of total internal reflection principles etcetera. And as long as if you bend the structure cross section then light can also guide. However, here if you see this n 1 is the substrate refractive index and here core region n 2 where n 2 greater than n 1. So, we can say that n 2 minus n 1 in the order of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 3 that is proposed that is theoretically uh, one can also analyze. If it is the area cross section this area is about uh, say 10 micrometers diameter 10 micrometer by 10 micrometer and so on or diameters if it is circular it is 10 micrometer circular. Fine, so far so good. So, now this is the demonstration in the same paper it is showing the demonstration of guided mode how when it is uh, uh, actually imaged in the output polished output for example, here in this case if you have a all the light you are coupling and coming here and you put a camera here ok here camera. Okay. In that camera if you try to image then you will see interestingly that different type of pattern by controlling the input uh, angle or little bit uh, translation here and there people could demo show that different type of modes whatever earlier schematically shown the field distribution of the guided light. It is you see it is like a simple first one is a like a simple laser uh, spot beam. This, this would be called as a first order mode, this first mode, mode number 1 and then next mode which will be more confined. This is the tightest confinement will happen here, tightest confinement beam and well separate and if you see the next tightest confined mode, so called mode, we will discuss that in this course how, how all these modes evolves and 
uh, their mathematical analysis everything will be uh, learning. So, that will be actually next tighter uh, mode that will be calling as a mode number 2 and then we can call mode number 3, mode number 4, how their distribution light intensity distribution as a different mode they will be there. And we will learn later that this different type of uh, modes all these modes as you go higher and higher you will see that confinement will be slowly slowly reducing and as you go for higher and higher higher more then that will not be no more it will be confined. And also each of this distribution particular characteristic distribution they will guide they will propagate with a distinct phase velocity. So, phase velocity of this one will be the lowest phase velocity of this one will be the uh, next lowest and so on slowly slowly phase velocity will be increasing and suddenly it will be uh, like a free space medium homogeneous medium how it will be propagating. So, that thing actually discussed. So, that means light guide circuitry everything is coming up and also so on that theoretical demo, uh, presentation analytical presentation if you are bending a structure normally what happen in the bend region light can leak also a bit it can be lost. So, that is a another problem of the uh, waveguide circuitry because you cannot just bend the waveguide uh, according to your wish because once you bend the property of this modes guidance they somehow disturb and there is a possibility that it will be uh, uh, leaked. So, here they also demonstrated that as bend radius how the loss is actually increasing as you increase the bend radius loss is it, uh, it is a log scale it is shown loss is actually decreasing. So, straight waveguide loss is lower and as you bend then loss will be reduced uh, increased and tighter and tighter bend loss will be increased. So, this is the tighter and tighter uh, bend uh, bending radius it is shown here all right. So, then uh, this in 1930 uh, to 2013 uh, Ivan Camino I should say uh, Ivan Camino. So, you know wave guide was fabricated. Now, this guy in lithium niobate this another material not glass that is actually synthetic material say ferroelectric material lithium niobate crystal he could fabricate uh, a wave guide structure of this geometry it is kind of reeve structure cross section if you see this is a reeve structure and both side he put electrode and after putting electrode and he showed that if you just apply electric field then refractive index of this waveguide cross section can be controlled. And by controlling that depending on the signal you are giving the phase or refractive index of the waveguide can be changed. When refractive index can be changed that guided mode will see different phase velocity. So, in this way one can actually demonstrate modulator phase modulator that is very very important component for your integrated uh, optical circuits. So, you need a laser you need a modulator you need waveguide. So, waveguide and you can have a modulator we will discuss that all these things just here you are giving we are giving how that is evolved. And he has shown that if you just uh, consider this type of circuitry you can imagine model like this thing. So, your coaxial cable 50 ohm cable if you are just uh, giving your electrical or microwave signal whatever depending on that you can have also impedance matched load 50 ohm. So, that maximum power can be transferred to the uh, microwave power can be transferred to the electrode structure and depending on that uh, signal you can control the refractive index and then you can have your um, uh, light propagation you can actually modulate and you can analyze electrical circuits with this resistance and maybe this kind of capacitance this capacitance is basically coming out of because of these two electrodes this electrodes and electrodes and in between your dielectric waveguide and that capacitance typically they measure about 10 picofarad. So, if you uh, analyze that thing that this type of circuitry the bandwidth of this um, structure modulator structure is shown up to 640 megahertz later on more advanced waveguide structure, advanced electrode structure, advanced uh, circuit etcetera people could demonstrate modulator up to 40 gigahertz, 100 gigahertz and so on ok. So, uh, these things here it is mentioned the series inductance of the leads and stay capacitance of the connector interfere 
with the measurement of the peak modulating voltage V at high frequency that is why bandwidth limitation. So, that is just explained here and that was happened when you know that is 1974 about say 26 plus 20 about 47 years ago. Okay. However, these unwanted impedance can be eliminated or reduced in a practical device that was proposed and in fact it has been done also later on. Okay. And then I am coming down uh, that, so that was actually 1970s or so and this Amnan Yarif he actually uh, uh, says that the modulator demonstrated by Ivan Camino earlier I have shown it was lithium nibate and that got, saw the success. However, this first the modulator that means the uh, device where actually you can uh, transfer data from electrical domain to optical domain that was first time demonstrated by Amnon Arib, but that was in semiconducting material. But however, lithium nibate is found to be more robust and more uh, good uh, property efficient properties that is why it saw the success unfortunately his credit actually taken away by the um, guy Ivan Camino, but he was the man who demonstrated first um, the modulator in semiconductor. And in this article also it is written 2008 he says actually Amnan Yarif he is he his work in uh, photonics guided wave optics everything it is a phenomenal optoelectronics phenomenal he has a very nice book also in photonics I think some portion of this course I will be covering from that uh, book also. He mentioned that modulator was the only success story for integrated optics until 2000. The reason being you see from 1947 the transistor to in integrated electronic circuits uh, evolution is phenomenal. But laser also demonstrated laser diode was in 1960, but until 2000 for integrated optics proposal to optical circuits proposal to uh, the different type of device demonstration etcetera until 2000 only the modulator that sees the commercial success. Reason? Uh, reason because there was no good material like silicon for electro what happened in electronics industry. For photonics, optics you did not have some good material to demonstrate laser, waveguide, modulator, detector etcetera all those type of thing was not people were trying different material platform, but not so successful. So, now I come back in the same uh, uh, issue uh, journal of light wave technology where Yarif commented that modulator was the only success story until 2000. The IP Camino who was actually the um, key person to demonstrate lithium nib modulator which has been used in uh, fiber optic communication. He says that well silicon photonics actually is the taking over. So, he is writing in 2008, but once upon a time he himself was thinking that lithium nib modulator could be fabricated uh, modulator high speed modulator could be fabricated in lithium nibate. So, lithium nibate could be the silicon of optics world. However, it was not happened it did not happen. So, uh, he himself confessed that okay, the new material platform silicon and silicon photonics technology is coming up and that is actually going to roll for uh, photonics integrated photonics instead of so called integrated optics what was proposed originally. So, silicon photonics actually uh, is huge subject towards realizing integrated photonic device certain circuits that is the conclusion in 2008. That means, this conclusion came in the meantime silicon photonics technology already evolved I will discuss that. Now, you see how it was evolved it is actually 2019 story photonics company Renovash has announced the Odin platform so called Odin platform scaling its 100 Gbps per lambda silicon photonics engine from 800 Gbps to 3.2 terabit per second in a single chip transmitter silicon photonics transmitters 
was demonstrated and it was named as a silicon photonics engine. You remember that I was just mentioning how the silicon photonics engine was demonstrated. Okay, that is the actually the future. That is the market today. Okay. So with this, I just want to give you very quickly how the R and D and industry success and future direction happening. Okay. You see, if you search today in Google Scholar, just search integrated photonics. Then you will see plenty of articles coming out, and you have option to filter year wise how many articles are there. So, in 2001-2002 integrated photonics article it was 590 and it is slowly exponentially growing and 2019-2020 it is 5820. So, that is the interest growing among the academic society, academic community. And when you are searching for photonic integrated circuits, so photonic integrated circuits actually somewhat it was in 2001 15400 and because the photonic integrated circuit, the proposal, the future, the prospect was known for a long time. But because of the shortage of uh, good material platform and um, good technology, advanced technology needed, that is why not many circuitry was being demonstrated because not many people can access those type of advanced sophisticated technology. That is why it has not been improved a lot also, but certain industry everything continuously trying and you see uh, year wise that uh, more or less published article almost flat around 16,000, 17,000 or so on. So, now this is photonic integrated circuit. What is the difference between integrated photonics and photonic integrated circuit? Here I try to uh, uh, distinguish them, distinct them. So, for integrated photonics basically uh, people are meaning component or devices that is potentially integrable, potentially integrable, integrable waveguide based passive or reconfigurable standalone devices, just one device, one function and that can be different platform. It can be silicon, it can be lithium niobate, it can be glass, it can be indium phosphide, it can be polymer, different type of platform, but functional device, standalone device, those type of research article that means integrated photonics. And when you say photonic integrated circuit, that means more than few uh, components will be integrated depending on the uh, technology available and uh, suitability of the platform. So, it is kind of circuitry, it is a kind of functional circuit or you can say that application specific photonic integrated circuit, application specific photonic integrated circuit, those type of things is basically means for photonic integrated circuit. That is how the academic research is going on. Okay. And this is the industrial success, photonics engine is the proposal, whatever I have silicon photonics engine, but Intel, Cisco all they have already demonstrating, uh, they have already uh, selling products like 100 Gbps transceiver, 400 Gbps transceivers and those transceivers actually people are using for communicating uh, just to replace copper wire in data centers. Okay. This is what it is shown that uh, uh, kind of switch and uh, transceiver together so that it can be useful for various uh, data center where actually power bandwidth limitation of copper cables could be uh, get rid of by using optical fibers. So, these are basically the switch and the transceiver switch. So, these are actually here it is 65 switches are shown here. 65 transceiver is plugged into a switching network and uh, because of that basically I think uh, every year actually 3, uh, 3 million transceivers Intel its alone is actually uh, exporting, actually selling. So, today if you see, if you search current market, research market everything, so silicon photonics market is about 1 billion and in future it can be 3 billion uh, market by 2025. And here it is shown in the uh, other than this transceiver, photonics engine, silicon photonics engine, many other application areas starting from. Uh, so, here it is shown that interconnect transceivers and uh, uh, this is transceivers and some microwave photonics for not only for uh, civil radar systems and avionics, microwave photonics also can be useful for 5G, 6G communications, IOTs 
in internet of things and then also medical applications and also quantum information processing or various area various uh, topics is being covered by so called CMOS silicon photonics technology some of the information here it is shown that psi quantum and global foundries have demonstrated the ability uh, to manufacture core quantum components quantum computers you are uh, now uh, hearing uh, much but mostly they are uh, demonstrated using superconducting nanoware which operates very very low temperature okay those are quantum computers but people are trying to demonstrate quantum photonic processor in silicon photonics platform so that it can be at least part part of the uh, quantum computer can be can operate at room temperature so that is how the target and uh, so now silicon photonics area is vast so that is the reason this this subject is very hot and very attractive today and uh, one must learn uh, the basic things uh, how it evolved and what is the future and how the technology is progressing how can be improved and that that is why the subject uh, is very much relevant today so now uh, i will be just uh, giving some subjective description and course outline uh, that is uh, that is how we will be going through so here i just uh, as I, as you see all the background story how it is prospects futures everything and that is happened it is not one day it's a 50 60 70 years of uh, research okay so if i try to uh, cover try to learn if i want to learn uh, the entire subject uh, starting from the uh, working principle to technologies to uh, integration capabilities all those type of things we can say that the photonic integrated circuit uh, so called application specific and sometimes it is called field programmable photonic gate array APPGA similar to electronic APGA field programmable gate array uh, this thing has two distinct part one is integrated optics another is opto electronics integrated optics means some component structures where you can actually um, use for uh, different type of passive function as well as active functions like passive function like power, power dividers, filters, ma multiplexing, wavelength multiplexing, demultiplexing and active devices like tunable filters, switches, modulators all those type of things and optoelectronics is the mostly 3-5 semiconductor waveguide devices basically diodes where you can have laser sources and photo detectors as well as modulators also. So, this is kind of opto electronics where actually optics and electronics they can exchange energy. Electron loses energy can get some photon, photon emission and photon is lost to create electron hole pair to generate current that is in photo detector. So, those type of things where electrons and photons interaction is there in some devices that is actually opto electronics. So, those type of opto electronic devices also is the part of photonic integrator circuit and uh, also it is important also electronic driver circuit for this modulator active devices opto electron devices to drive them or to convert electrical signal into elect optical signal or back you need electronic driver circuit. So, that is a very much part of uh, photonic integrated circuits, but since those type of electronic driver circuits are well known and uh, you can learn many things from other subject I will not be covering that, but uh, we will be trying to uh, understand the functionalities, their capabilities, their technological limitation etcetera in this course uh, in uh, basically this is the uh, um, whole syllabus I can uh, mention it can be divided into um, uh, six chapters, seven chapter I would say chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 and more or less it will be uh, I, I will be uh, trying to cover it discuss it within 50 um, concise lectures and in chapter 1 I will be discuss maybe three lectures starting from Moore's law, some background theory, etc., all those type of things. And then chapter 2, uh, 5 lectures that is fundamental of light waves, lossy dielectrics, metal, semiconductor, principle. Oh, these are the things required for integrated photonics circuitry. 
and then waveguide is the basic building block that I will be discussing how the waveguide theory developed guided modes, their orthogonality conditions and their interaction like how they coupled exchange power from one waveguide to another waveguide those things I will be discussing and then different type of uh, st standalone functions component uh, how they are they can be designed their working principle etc that is your chapter 4 for example directional coupler multimode interferometer Mac gender interferometer this terminology for the moment you just uh, keep in your mind so that in course of time it will be coming and you have to learn that that is the information I want to give you now and then how those type of passive devices you can make it reconfigurable tunable that thing uh, programmable tunable means programmable all those type of thing that I will be discussing in chapter 5 and in chapter 6 I will be discussing basically it is it will be dedicated to uh, high speed modulators and uh, their design and working principle because that is the key of how uh, fast and efficiently you can transmit a data per bit how minimum energy you can use to trans transmit. So, that particular um, thing I will be dedicating in this chapter 6 and then finally, I will be discussing bit of optoelectronics because I said that silicon photonics is the major thing, but silicon photonics only limitation is there that you cannot integrate efficient laser source because it is an indirect band gap semiconductor. So, sometimes hybrid integration uh, for laser purpose, photo detector detection purpose and some kind of uh, their performance uh, to improve the performance heterogeneous integration everything I will be discussing in chapter 7 and uh, some kind of budget link all those type of things how can be improved in future that will be discussed. So, this is all about your course. Uh, so, I hope you all will be enjoying. Thank you very much.